The Dallas Stars sweep the West Coast road trip and are playing some of their best hockey of the season. The defense is getting better, top line is having success, and now a five-game homestand is on the docket. Let's jump into it next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of One of Five Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast in on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Welcome back to another week of Locked On Stars, Stars fans. It's a pleasure to be with you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you enjoy. Enjoyed your weekend. What a road trip for the Dallas Stars. They go three for three. They sweep the West Coast and they cap it off with a 4-1 victory over the Los Angeles Kings. And they have the Kings number this season. An excellent game in L.A. Everything is starting to come together, Stars fans. So excited to jump into another episode for you today. I had a crazy weekend of hockey. I watched so much hockey. I feel like my brain is fried. Went to the Minnesota State High School Tournament. I watched the WCHA Final Face-Off. So much going on. Of course, I was watching the Stars as well on uh, a couple of the the late nights uh, in Los Angeles, but uh, excited to be back, ready to uh, jump into some excellent, excellent stuff from the Dallas Stars lately. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. So, the question of the day, is the defense getting better? And Chris Tanev has absolutely made this team better. (laughs) And that's... um, isn't breaking news by any stretch of the imagination, but he has jumped in and he's had an impact for the better. And the stars are starting to tighten things up here recently. And I I loved what Daryl Ray said uh, at the end of the game against LA in the third period that the real test for the stars moving forward is going to be their defensive game and will make or break their postseason run. Uh, He didn't mention anything about the postseason, but in my perspective, it's going to make or break their postseason for requests at the Stanley Cup. Can they play good team defense? And just taking a look over the last five games, by the way, the Stars are on a five-game win streak, which is their longest of the season, and dating back to that 4-1 win over Winnipeg at the end of February, they've given up one to the Jets, they gave up two to San Jose in a shootout win, then of course you have the crazy 7-6 game, and then over the weekend, you gave up two to Anaheim and one to LA. And of course, a few of these teams do not boast offensive talent, or uh, the the danger that uh, some of the teams you're going to be taking on this uh, upcoming homestand. But either way, this is much better. This is a much better trend. One, two, six is a little bit of an anomaly, but then two and one. That is more like it. Jake Ottinger looked really good against Anaheim when he needed to be. Fortunately, the Stars got up quickly and they put it away early. The Stars come back once again to defeat the LA Kings after giving up the first goal just uh, about a half a minute in. And uh, also the Stars pick up their 40th win of the season. Uh, The Stars have required 66 or fewer games to reach the 40 win mark in a single season for the fourth time in franchise history. Takes them 60 Six games to do that this season. And Chris Tanev has 
been a welcome, welcome addition to the Dallas Stars. Of course, these are very, very small sample sizes, but taking a look at this Lindell Tanev pairing, which is uh, the pairing that uh, Pete DeBoer has rolled with here to uh, begin the Tanev era of Dallas Stars hockey. In 31 minutes this season, Lindell and Tanev have an expected goals against of 0.5. That is the best on the Dallas Stars. And of course, it's very, very small, but they're starting to look like a complete shutdown pairing, exactly what the Stars were looking for. You knew my gripe before Tanev entered the lineup. You need to find a way to split up Lindell and Hockenpah. That was the pairing that was really struggling, and Lindell has actually had a very nice season. He's had his moments, but Hockenpah has struggled mightily this year. And Tanev comes in, and now he elevates Lindell because you give Lindell a more mobile partner, really, really strong on his board battles, which helps him being more mobile because he can make plays, he can start breakouts, where Hockenpah a lot of the time gets stuck in between because he's not as fleet-footed and you have to throw a lot of hope passes. You're rimming the puck around the wall and then you're requiring a special play off the sidewall uh, to, to make a pass and get out of your defensive zone. Tanev and Lindell are shut down, especially in front of their own net. That's one of the most phenomenal characteristics of Tanev's play is his positioning in front of his own net. He clears out. He's strong on pucks. He's strong on opposing sticks. He just always is in the right spot. He blocks a ton of shots. He was phenomenal in the game against LA. He's starting to kill penalties now, which is also a great sign because you break up that Lindell and Hockenpah pairing, which were pretty much exclusively getting all the power or the, all the penalty kill time. He, he, he played over three minutes on the uh, PK uh, against LA when the Stars got into some trouble uh, during that one. 334. Uh, was his time on ice. He, he blocked three shots in the game. Uh, he, he gets crucial clears. Um, he, he's just, he's so, so cerebral with his play. Um, and pairing him with Lindell looks like uh, a home sweet home. A 2.55 game score uh, against LA. Uh, in Anaheim, of course, he scored the goal from uh, the blue line. Had a game score of 3.31. In uh, that one with a couple of blocks, expected goals against, against the Kings, 0.2, and then it was 0.4 against Anaheim. It's come down every game he's played. Uh, of course, it was pretty high during that wild, wild contest in San Jose. But the defense is starting to come together. I still do not love the suitor hawk and pop pairing. I do not like it at all. I think that has to go before the postseason rolls around. But I feel like it's something we're all going to have to accept because Pete DeBoer is going to rock with a veteran in Yanni Hockenbaugh over Niels Lundqvist. Um, he, he just is. Um, whether that's right or wrong, uh, I, I can sit here and gripe about it. Uh, I've I've made my peace with it that I think Hockenbaugh and Suter are just going to be the pairing together um, for the foreseeable future. I don't think they want to break up Thomas Harley and Miro Haskinen. Why would you? They are an elite defensive pairing, and they still have the firepower to uh, <laughs> uh, to get the job done. Miro Haskinen has been so good since his return to injury. Picked up uh, a, a couple of points against Anaheim after uh, his career high four point night uh, against San Jose in that wild win. He, he continues to. Uh, be a, a welcome addition on the blue line. <laughs> uh, not that he's an addition, but uh, the, the power play is starting to hit its strike too, which is uh, which is also uh, due to the fact that Miro is starting to find some rhythm on the power play. They've crept into the top 10 uh, in the NHL, uh, and Miro is quarterbacking it. He's making the right decisions. And frankly, the Stars are just executing more. They're getting 
better looks. They're not as perimeter. They're starting to shoot the puck. They're becoming more simple. If you look at some of the power play goals uh, over the last uh, you know week or so, um, they've also uh, plotted or, or potted in eight power play goals in their past four games. Jamie Benn in front of the net. Joe Pavelski just getting pucks in front of the crease and then battling from there. Look at the White Johnston goal on Saturday against LA towards the end of that power play. They move the puck down to the goal line. Duchesne just throws it in front. Johnston battles, and he whacks it home. They're becoming more simplified. Plus, Jason Robertson is becoming a factor. He's becoming an option on the power play. He's shooting more. He's finding shooting lanes. And um, it, it's, uh, it's all starting to to flow together, and they're playing some of their best hockey of the season. Uh, The game against L.A. really dominated from after the half, the the first 30 seconds of the game when they they gave up the first goal, but they jumped on it. They were strong on pucks. They are really, really hungry, especially on the walls. They win those 50-50 battles. And they just don't give their opponents a ton of space. They played some of their best games uh, against the Kings this season. They get really good uh, net minding. Scott Wedgwood was great. Good to see him back in between the pipes. Now that Otter has taken the reins uh, a bit here uh, down the stretch, their PK was brilliant. PK was brilliant against a, an LA team that is really good at home. Uh, they they forced LA to go 0 for 4 on the night, uh, gave up 25 shots, um, didn't give up a, a ton of dangerous looks. If you take a look at, at some of the scoring chances, 21 to 8 at 5 on 5 for the Stars. They outchanced them 30 to 12 uh, in the game. Uh, they, they controlled the pace, they dictated play, they weren't on their heels. Um, and, and I, I think it's this combination of simplifying, uh, and just making the right play, not always the gorgeous one. And they're, they're starting to get rewarded. Good to see mush Mason Marchment gets back off the schneid, uh, gets a goal. So just a, a ton of things are going better, but more importantly, the defense is starting to find its groove. Tanev and Lindell look great. Harley and Haskinen, I'm not going to fault them for breaking it up. I would love to see Suter in Hockenpah at some point get separated. Um, But the tough thing is with possibly Lindell and Tanev being inseparable moving forward, it it makes it tough. You're going to have to either rock with your young gun that has no postseason experience um, or – you go with Hockenpah. In the majority of time, Pete DeBoer is going to choose Yanni Hockenpah. He's big. He's experienced. He's played in big moments. But at the same time, you don't know how Lundqvist is going to ra- react until you put him into that situation. And that's what I'm afraid of, that they're not going to give him enough opportunities down to stretch to really prove or solidify himself into the lineup in game one, in round one. Um, and uh, I, I feel like they're missing out on that potential if they don't give him a shot. Because Suter and Lundqvist have been really, really good together this season. Uh, if you take a look at their numbers, uh, their expected goals for uh, are, are very good uh, this season. And um, I, I thought they, they have been playing really, really well. Uh, especially in the month of February, even though they, they were struggling at some times. Um, and uh, with, with the offense the way it is, they don't need to be, uh, they don't need to be some uh, uh, necessarily a top three team in, in goals against average because if they can just shut down enough, if they can just get good goaltending enough more consistently, they're, they're they're going to win a lot of hockey games, especially come playoff time too, because they are so deep. Um, and, and teams are are really going to have to watch out for what is a balanced attack, <laughs> a very balanced attack. And um, and that's why we're going to start to segue into this top line is really starting to find its groove. Robertson, Hints, and Pavelski are having success again really dating back to 
what was it a couple of weeks ago? I I did an episode and I discussed the top line is not very good, <laughs> uh, especially in the month of February. Weren't creating a whole lot, and now it, it's starting to come to fruition, and that's great. So we'll what we'll, we'll touch on the top line here recently and how good they have been in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Take out your smartphone right now, Stars fans. Download the Game Time app. They are obsessed with finding you ways to help save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the best place to find last-minute seats. Want to go to the upcoming games this week and next for the Dallas Stars homestand. They got five in a row. I'll be heading to Thursday's night's game against the New Jersey Devils. I'm back in town for a few days, excited to go watch the Stars in person. Go ahead, get game time. They can save you a ton of money. With zone deals, pick the section and game time picks the seats. You can also see the view from your seat before you buy it. So you don't have to worry about having an obstruction, a railing, piece of glass, whatever it is, because you can see the view before you buy the seat. You can buy the tickets so fast, two seconds, really. It's two seconds because it's two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Man, the, the Stars are buzzing, to say the least. By the way, they are first place in the Central Division. Do not forget that. The Stars pick up a big win over LA in a back-to-back -back situation. They have now reached the 40-win mark, and they have 89 points this season, 40-17-9, and nine, a goal differential of Plus 43, by the way, plus 43. And that is third best in the Western Conference. They're dominating on the road, by the way, 21, 9, and 5 on the road this season. Uh, I, I feel like that's a very, very quiet 21, 9, and 5. <laughs> um, and they've had to play a ton <laughs> on the road. Uh, I, I think it was 12 out of the last 17. Uh, dating back to Saturday, have been away from the American Airlines Center. So th they've had their work cut out for them. And, and it's funny how much a few weeks can change your perspective on the Stars. February was rough. They were playing a lot of good teams. They struggled to, to win uh, past regulation. They struggled to win in general. They get Tanev. The schedule starting to lighten up. And now they're putting some wins together. And... We're in a stretch where hopefully this is all building, right? Playing your best hockey when it matters most. And part of that is the top line. Joe Pavelski, Rope Hintz, and Jason Robertson. When they are rolling, the Stars team is going to be very hard to beat because you have Mason Marchment and Matt Duchesne with eventually Tyler Sagan returning to the lineup. He's beginning to skate a lot more, uh, which is a good sign. And there's no reason to rush him back either. A healthy Tyler Sagan is going to be so beneficial in the postseason. And I was really, really happy to find out that Sagan decided to kind of back away, take time to let his body recover because they don't need him playing at 85% or what 80% come playoff time because if he's fully healthy, they're going to be even more dangerous. And with the amazing season he's having, I bet it was hard for him to step away, but he's doing the right thing. <laughs> he's doing the right thing for the, for the greater good, so to speak. But look at Robertson hints and Pavelski lately. And of course, Johnston and Stan Coven, the kids have gotten their fair share, rightfully so. But look out here in the last six games, and this is dating back to the win over Winnipeg, Robertson with eight points in six games, Pavelski with six in six games, and Rope Hintz with six in six games. All three of them, the entire trio has three goals in their last six games. All three of them. And 
they really struggled, especially in the goal scoring department in February. They're starting to heat up a bit. Robertson's playing a lot in those six games. He's uh, average a time on ice at uh, just uh, just a tick under 19 minutes per game. He's starting to heat up. Uh, he loves playing in Los Angeles uh, in his hometown. He leads the team with 65 points this season. Uh, Rope looks like himself. He, he's flying down the ice. <laughs> he, he's making so many plays off the rush. Uh, and Joe is just starting to, to score here. He's starting to find pay dirt. Uh, with, with Pavelski, he can get into some of these slumps, but you don't worry a ton about him because he's always in the right position. He knows where he's going to score his goals. He knows where he's going to get his opportunities and it's going to be right in front of the blue paint. Um, and uh, at some points it's just him hitting goalies or, or missing. He, he's starting to find the back of the net. Uh, but this top line has looked really, really good recently for the stars. Um, and that's a, a great sign uh, for Dallas <laughs> because um, it just, it's another layer that you have to worry about. Like you, you got to worry about Robertson and then it's like, well, you got Sagan or, or Marchment who's having a career year. <laughs> and then, and then you have a, a, a third line now that, well, I guess it's really the, the pseudo second line that sports Stan Coven and Johnston, who every time they touch the ice, there's a scoring opportunity. Jamie Ben playing some of his best hockey of the season of the season boy he looks really good he has eight points in his last six games uh, it's incredible what the stars are sporting right now Sagan with 20 goals this year and he hasn't played in three weeks Johnston Pavelski Rope Duchesne Robertson all 20 goals and they don't have a, a player in the top 25 in scoring this season <laughs> they don't have a player in the top 25 in scoring so balanced. This is something we have never seen, <laughs> or at least something hasn't been seen in a decade, a decade plus. It's incredible the type of production they're getting from multiple guys. Uh, and Miro's gone on a run here recently. He's got 44 points in 55 games, had a real, real slow start to the season, obviously. Um, but he's starting to pick it up with his production. And uh, it just feels like it's a combination of everything coming together. That feels like a theme right now for today's episode. They're just, they're building. They're building. It's the march to the playoffs in their building. They want to win the first place in the central division. They want to win the central. They want to play a wild card team um, and you can't blame them. They're starting to try to lengthen that gap. It's going to be tough. Um, and I think they're in a great spot right now. If I was Vancouver, I would be shaking in my boots knowing if you win the Western Conference, there is a real possibility you could be playing the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, shaking in my boots. Talk about a Western Conference. You probably don't want to win this season. <laughs> uh, the West is going to be a gauntlet as it is. Um, and, and we'll see, right? Uh, I mean, Vegas could very well, if, if, if nothing goes right, they could drop out uh, of a playoff spot. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think that the eight teams are, are pretty much solidified. Uh, I, I don't see Calgary or Minnesota making a run, but um, uh, that would be tough first round matchup uh, for, for anybody within the Western Conference. And, and the Stars right now are in a line to play Nashville, which I think is a great, great spot for them. So um, uh, we'll see how it, uh, it moves forward, but top line is uh is is playing really really well here uh in the last few weeks and and they've been a big reason along with Stan Coven and Johnston of course <laughs> can't forget about those two during this five game win streak which is a season long um which which is surprising to some degree because of how great they've been offensively but uh it, it's kind of been they win three three or four in a row and, and then they they lose one and they go back to three or four uh we're starting to see some of those uh, extended streaks now um, and some of the best teams this season have had those amazing, amazing win streaks. Uh, 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 New York just had one, right, where they went over 10 games. So um, uh, Stars are starting to to flex some of their dominance. And, and Chris Tanev was a great pickup. He really was a phenomenal pickup. Okay, let's jump into uh, 
Let's jump into the, the five-game homestand upcoming for the Dallas Stars. They got some really good teams on the docket. It should be a phenomenal homestand. A lot of days of rest in between. They're going to get a ton of practice time. Uh, March is a, a great month for the Stars. It's a great month. <laughs> so uh, home sweet home. Let's do it uh, in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is also brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets with FanDuel. Let's you bet on every game of the tourney. March is a phenomenal time to be a sports fan. And now March Madness is here. It's ready to go. Whether you're betting on a big upset or one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Let's be honest. Most of our brackets are going to be completely destroyed after the first two days of the tournament. But that doesn't keep you from making money with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Should be a fun and exciting tournament as it usually is. The big time upsets in the first round. Go ahead, plop your feet up, make some money with FanDuel because new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down those nets. All righty, a five-game homestand upcoming for the Dallas Stars. This is, let's see, the longest homestand since back in January. They played uh, a three-game homestand, which isn't much, but <laughs> it's been a long since they've had more than three in a row uh, in their own building. And uh, it's a good stretch. You get the the top team in the National Hockey League here tomorrow against the Florida Panthers. Be uh, on the lookout for tomorrow's episode. All you everydayers out there will not want to miss us. Uh, do a little breakdown on the uh, the Florida Panthers who uh, have loaded up for the playoffs, <laughs> and uh, they've been so so good uh, this season. Um, and and I think have a, a real shot to go back to the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I, this could be. To be honest, a preview. It, it really could. <laughs> uh, an Eastern Conference and Western Conference teams. Um, and uh, they're, they're a grind team. You got New Jersey on Thursday. I'm excited to be at that one. Uh, you got LA once again. And then Arizona and Pittsburgh uh, to round it out. Arizona has stunk recently. Pittsburgh has fallen behind by eight points uh, of the final playoff spot. Looks like their season is coming to an end. Of course, they sold at the deadline. Jake Gunstall went over to Carolina. So uh, a, a lot of intriguing, intriguing storylines. I feel like uh, within these five games, uh, what's the, the defense going to look like against a team like Florida, who is really, really strong on the four check. They are not pretty. They are not sexy by any means. They want to bruise. They want to hurt you. They want to be physical and completely wear you down on an every night basis. Oh yeah. And they have some guys that are completely lighting it up. Uh, they're, they're just so well-rounded, probably the most well-rounded team uh, in the National Hockey League. Uh, a lot of similarities, I, I feel like, to Dallas. Like They, they got great depth. Um, they just have more snarl. They, they want to beat you down. They literally want to beat you up. <laughs> so I love that. New Jersey, of course, high-flying. Uh, they're creative. L.A. again, which they've had their number here so far uh, this season. Uh, and then Arizona and Pittsburgh, um, who who – uh, who knows what you're going to get out of them, but uh, the stars here in, in the next week, what they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they got like nine days off here in, in the next two weeks. So they're going to get a lot of practice time, which only is going to help Tanev continue to get comfortable. Looks like he already is. He's found a home um, and uh, they, they get some rest, which is much needed after the month of February. Look, I promised, I promised to all you stars fans out there at the end of February, it was going to get better. It's it was going to get better. I promised you, <laughs> and uh, it's starting to it's starting to happen. Uh, it's all sunshine and, and rainbows uh, right now. So that's a, a, a bit of a look ahead here in the next five games 
at home. A lot of work to be cut out to, for the Stars, but they're in first place in the Central Division. Winnipeg still has three games in hand, but hey, if you take care of business in your own, uh, you're you're not gonna have uh, you're not gonna have any issues winning the Central Division. A lot is uh, a lot is still to be decided. Okay, that wraps up a Monday episode. Um, I, I tried to come on here with some personality, uh, not really personality, some energy today. It's been a long, long weekend for myself. I watch a ton of hockey, so uh, I'll probably be back to my normal peppy self tomorrow. Um, so I apologize if I didn't sound as excited about the huge wins over Anaheim in LA. Uh, inside, I am fluttering uh, with what we're seeing from, from the Stars. Complete beatdown of the Ducks, and then uh, they do it again the next night against LA. Woo, West Coast, man. Oh, Stars love it out there. We should we should play out there more often. Okay, <laughs> that'll do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you for all the support, as usual. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys have been hammering, hammering in the comment section. Love it, love it to see everybody's observations, what they want to see out of the stars, um, and uh, we'll continue to do that down the stretch. So let's let's keep it going. What do you say? Enjoy the rest of your day. See you tomorrow. We'll talk about Florida, talk about some other things. I don't know, whatever pops into my head, uh, and hopefully the stars can extend that winning streak to six games. All righty, we will see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.